This evening, I'm going to speak from God's word about pursuing or following holiness. Pursuing or running after holiness. Amen? What is that to run after? Someone is pursuing a degree. Somebody is pursuing some. So they are running after. Some of them are going steadily. Some of them are in haste. Some of them are in speed. But this evening, we're going to see from God's word how to pursue holiness. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you excited? God has called us to be holy. Amen? The old covenant called this nation Israel to live distinctly from all other nations through holiness. How? By focusing on the external matters of the law. Well, the law was given and this nation that God chose, they had to focus on holiness. Pursue holiness by focusing on the external matters of the law. But for us, Jesus calls his people to holiness in the new covenant. Amen. And that proceeds from the heart. Hallelujah. So the holiness that Jesus calls you and I to in the new covenant proceeds out of the heart. The biggest problem that people have is with their heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak it or speak it the mouth. Amen. So God is dealing with the heart. Amen. You see Samuel, the prophet Samuel too looked in his heart. He felt, you know, this guy seems to fit in my frame. I've checked son number one, two, three, four, five. Didn't work, but oh, this is the one I feel in my heart. And God immediately spoke to Samuel and said, Man look at and judge it by the outward appearance but God looks at the heart. So you know what Samuel you are going according to your heart but it is I am looking at the heart of men and I know there is nothing in our heart that is hidden from God. And if anybody has an issue with it and has a struggle with you know can God see everything that is in my heart? I have news for you this evening. Forget your heart. The Bible says in all creation, nothing is hidden from him. <laughs> so what's your heart? What's your little heart that's not even seen from there? Should not be seen from light years over, but he sees your heart. Nothing in all creation is hidden from, from God. How much more our hearts? He's interested in our hearts. So we see the old covenant Call God's chosen nation to walk and live a holy life by following the external matters of the law. But we today, in this time, in the new covenant by through Jesus, a holiness, it proceeds out of our hearts. Amen? So holiness is not the outcome of our personal loyalty to God and realization of fulfilling of fruitfulness originally which he intended for his people. It, it does not come out of loyalty but it comes out of obedience. Amen? And so I'm going to touch on a few points this evening which will help us. Number one, recognize that your life has either positives or negative effect. Your life has either positive or negative effect. And what does that call you to? It calls you and I to live life responsibly for the glory of God. I'm going to take you to scripture. I'm going to quote scriptures tonight, this evening. Matthew, what did I say? Number one, recognize that your life has either positive or negative effect or impact on others live responsibility live responsibly to bring glory to God let's turn to Matthew chapter 5 and verses 13 to 16 and it says you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men 14 you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. 15. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. 16. In the same way, let 
your light shine before men before whom before men before women before others before mankind that they may see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven hallelujah hallelujah your life has either a positive or a negative impact but the choice you make and the choice you make to glorify god amen through your life would we'll glorify god that means your life has been called to be a blessing to people how can you and i bless people when we don't pursue holiness people who don't pursue holiness they live a double standard life god has not called us to live a double standard life he's called us to live a single standard life and that standard is god's standard through jesus hallelujah and that standard god's standard through jesus is found in the word and through the word so we are called to live in line with the word of god and so the choices that we make and we need to ask ourselves a question this evening is my life a blessing to someone does my attitude my testimony my behavior put people off and they keep them keep them away from the house of god have i led someone astray have i grieved someone we need to ask this because if we desire to pursue holiness then all that we do must point to the glory of god amen like i said our lives can have effects positive or negative but the choice is ours amen look at mark 9509 and verse 50 it says salt is good but if it loses its saltiness how can you make it salty have salt have salt in yourselves and be at peace with each other be two things okay three things salt is good but if loses its saltiness how can it be made salty again once salt loses its saltiness it cannot be made salty again and this scripture says have salt in yourselves what does salt speak of taste if you get hospital food at home <laughs> you won't like that at all bland food salt you want salt some taste so if salt loses its saltiness it's of no use likewise This scripture makes it clear to us saying have salt in yourselves what is what is Jesus saying have taste in yourself have flavor in yourself the words that you speak are words that preserve amen salt is a preservative amen the words that you speak have not to put down somebody but build somebody so whenever people meet us ate i like to be with you talk to you why you always encourage me you always guide me you don't speak negative that means your life is a blessing i like to hear the words that you speak because there's sometimes people call and you don't want to hear that voice on the telephone you wait when the line will get disconnected you wait when the battery will just go dead hallelujah because there's nothing positive that comes from that person they always is try to gossip and slander and judge but those who carry the salt that Jesus has given his flavor amen we are the aroma of Christ Jesus when somebody comes close to you can they smell Jesus wow i'm not talking about the perfumes you wear i'm talking about Jesus you our perfumes wear out sometime or the other right true it it wears out sometime or the other but jesus never wears out even the bible says put on christ to put on christ put on humility put on love put on forgiveness put on it is not default it is not automatic it's not built in put on when you came into this world also mama put on <laughs> diapers it didn't fall from heaven right when you come out of the washroom your clothes don't fall on you you put on so the bible calls us to put on christ there's the enemy he does not want you to put on christ 
but Christ made himself available so that we can put on Christ. So what does the scripture say as we read here? It says have salt in yourself. And what 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 will that salt produce? What will that preservative produce? What will that taste and that flavor produce? It will bring peace. Hallelujah. Peace amongst brothers and sisters. Peace in families. It's very important when you and I pursue to live a holy life. One of the greatest factors in living a holy life is living a peaceful life. Holiness produces that peaceful life. So what will happen when the enemy uses somebody to condemn you, to judge you, to attack you? You will still have peace. When you have peace, you will not retaliate the way the enemy wants you to retaliate. And all that you are saying is, I am pursuing holiness. Why should I speak things, say things that will grieve the Holy Spirit? What I, what I said right now, your flesh honestly does not like it. Because our flesh has a lot of stuff on its own to fire. But when we die to self, let me tell you, our flesh has a lot of stuff to fire. From childhood you carry a lot of stuff which you can catch, fire people till they are dead. You can make them dead while they are still alive with your words. So what I mean to say, our flesh has a lot to offer but when we live a life that we are dead to self daily, then flesh is always pressed down. And the spirit rises up. Hallelujah. And that is holy living. Hallelujah. That is holy living. I could have said something. I could have said something to put somebody down. But I keep quiet. Because I know my God is a just God. The God whom I worship is a holy God. And he said be ye holy as I am holy. So I make a choice in pursuing holiness. Hallelujah. It says and be at peace with one another. Second, be loyal to God, forsake any ambition that compromises your commitment to God. Mm. Your commitment to God, your commitment to his house, forsake, be loyal to God and forsake any other offer that comes in between you and God. Which means your time with God. Your time with the word. Your time with the family. Your time to grow in his grace and word. You put every other ambition aside. And keep pursuing that. Because in pursuing that. You will pursue holy living. Many people walk away from God. Because they make wrong choices. Now that does not mean to say that you don't pick up jobs. You be jobless. Yes, but see to it that that does not stand. That ambition to become something does not come and stand as a barrier where you are compromising and not pursuing holiness because your career will not keep you going on. Holiness will take you till the end. Hallelujah. Your career has a limitation but pursuing holiness will affect eternity. Hallelujah. And so this evening, the second area where God is, is calling his people, the churches, to be loyal to him and to forsake every ambition that compromises your commitment with God. Look at Matthew 6 24 it says no one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other. He will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Some version says mammon or money. Luke 16 and verse 13 says no servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other. He will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. 
you seek his kingdom first matthew 6:33 and all these things shall be added unto you well don't you think that god does not know your desires he's even had he even has a solution to it he takes you to psalm 37:4 he says hey delight in me and i will grant you the desires of your you you all make you see you all give you businesses i'll give you he says ask of me and i'll give the nation so god is telling us to pursue holiness and not pursue things in life that will take us away from holiness now that does not mean you do not work or you quit or you put it in your papers tomorrow it means that if there is anything that is standing in between you and god that tries to stop you or evade you from from living a holy life then give up what comes in between and pursue holiness make the right choice hallelujah where are we this evening apart from being in saving grace the presence of god what's there in the presence of god God himself who is he Jesus Jesus taught his disciples when they asked to pray the model prayer our father who are in okay relationship location first is relationship our father location heaven now yeah yes hallowed means holy holy right holy god present here in his house holy this presence is holy you're seated in the presence of god which is holy you have the indwelling of god inside you by his spirit and by the way his spirit is called holy spirit so you see you can't avoid you can't separate i've just gone to church and come back i've gone into the presence of god and god's people have gathered here this is holy ground you know we can sing so many songs and not even think of what we are singing there are angels all around we stand on holy ground it's not just standing on holy ground but carrying the holy presence of god and living or manifesting a holy life hallelujah and so we see the second area where god is pointing out to us is to be loyal to forsake every other ambition that tries to stand in between and to pursue holiness number 3 acknowledge that only god has power over death and hell have reverence for him i don't know time and again if i see distraction in the church if i see people talking i just tell them to be quiet i just tell them because this is not the place to discuss you know if you you you're in a in the office in a corporate meeting i don't know how it works it's so amazing by default before you can get into that conference room with all your files your mobile goes on silent but in church who cares brother reggie is here he's and i have my ex colleague also here sometime you know in our meetings in the conference room inevitably there would be one guy and almost the same guy his mobile would ring and our md would like give him a dirty look he was like man what to tell you sometime we would have delegates from overseas and it's it's not it's not etiquette and so we are so wise so smart when is the office but god's house yeah hello yeah 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 i'll come in. tomorrow the meeting yeah 6 o'clock 8 o'clock back in the phone leave it holiness when you pursue holiness you revere his presence i i tell you the truth i wonder how some people sit this way in god's house A good ticket on video it's fine brother no need of editing they sit this way in god's house i don't know the the physiotherapist told them this way or i, I don't know it's it's weird but when it's before their md it's like they'll pull the sleeve down they pull the shirt pull the skirt down yes yes sir. reverence fear the problem is there that they got man fear and here no god fear it has to be exchanged you need 
to fear God and not man. If you live a holy life, you will not fear man, you will fear God. Then you will not play hanky-panky. If your child makes nonsense, you will whack them one. Because if you spare the rod, you will spoil the child. You tell them, Johnny, this is God's house. You better learn to not make mischief here. Okay? Don't be to office 15 minutes before. It is good if you be 15 minutes before. Come to church 30 minutes before. This is the house of God. Hallelujah. Teach your children to rever God. If you don't teach them, they will put you to shame. Because one day they will say, look at his son, her son. They will not take the child's name. They will take the father and mother's name. Because the mother and father did not care for holiness. That is replicated in the child. Don't come and catch me by the throat and say, you didn't teach. I'm not supposed to teach. You're supposed to teach. God gave you the children. God gave me Friday, Saturday and Monday for the present. So I'll teach you on those days. The other days you can catch the guys and the girls at home and teach them. I'm accountable Friday, Saturday and Monday. Three services we have here. Okay, I can teach you there. You need to teach your children. You need to be firm with them. Don't be threatened. Don't be intimidated. People who pursue holiness are fearless people. People who don't pursue holiness are shame, shameless people. People who pursue holiness are shameful people. They are, they are shame. They know what it is to grieve the Holy Spirit or to do things against the will of God and they rever His presence and His house. Hallelujah! And so we see, acknowledge, third, that only God has power over death and hell. So what do we need to learn from that? Have reverence for Him. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 28 says, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and and body in hell. Luke 12, 4 and 5 says, I tell you my friends, these are the words of Jesus. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after killing of the body has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Fear God. The Bible is so clear. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Sometimes people think, you know, they can do whatever nonsense they can do and you know, still it's fine. God is not doing anything to me. He'll do it. The only, you need revelation. The only revelation you need is that you're living in grace <laughs> and you don't know when that will snap. So if you take grace for granted, you'll get a shock of your life one day. It's my only prayer that that person will repent before grace stops. We can afford to take grace for granted. We can't afford to take grace for granted and say, I can do whatever I want to do and get my way through and you know, where is this God you're preaching about? I'm still doing my nonsense and I'm still surviving and I'm flourishing. Hey, when God's hand comes, it's come real hard down. No one can save you. No one can save you. God is calling his people to holiness now. We are living in the last of last days. If, the, if this world needs to see holiness, God, God has called the church to showcase his holiness through. God's holiness is supposed to be manifested through our living. And if not, then why would somebody want our God? They would still be happy in the ways of the world. And so third, be on your guard and know that it is a God who we serve, a God whom we are called to has power over death and hell and we must rever him. Amen. Fourth, we must discern Caesar's claims and those of God. Hallelujah. We must discern Caesar's claims and those of God. Why? We must honor the Lord as the highest authority. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus is the highest authority in our life. Amen. Look at this. In Matthew 22 and verses 
between verses 15 to 22 we learn that the Pharisees planned to lay a trap for Jesus by questioning him if it was rightful to pay taxes to Caesar or not Jesus number one before he answers them he gives them a title okay he gives them he says guys you are here but where where is your batch the batch is missing you hypocrites number one check that verse out Jesus said you Jesus addresses them as you hypocrites you're just trying to trap me you're trying to test me you know the scripture you know the word and see what Jesus replied he told them you hypocrites and he makes it very clear to render unto God what belongs to God and, and a God placed authority to give unto a God placed authority what God has placed over us and to give God what is due unto him hallelujah we must always honor the Lord as the highest authority am I making sense to you this evening Jesus Christ is our highest authority so the question is when you've got a choice to share the gospel and then they said no who will you obey don't share the gospel you got a choice there's an authority over you he says Eric you will not talk about this man called Jesus okay and Eric says no sir I will not obey you because Jesus is the Lord of my life you may be my CEO but he is my Lord he is my master he is my savior you may take my life I'm not afraid of you. You can't take my soul. Johnny, it's already gone to this man called Jesus. It's gone because I make a choice to live a holy life because the authority that is over me is Jesus and I declare his lordship over my life. And that is why, let me tell you, if Jesus is not lord of everything, then he is not lord of anything. If Jesus is not Lord of everything over your life, I have news for you. He is Lord over nothing. This is serious business. Because many times people try to compromise. When it comes to an opportunity sharing God's word or ministering. Oh, they, I'm, I'm going to lose my life. I'm no, no, God is not saying go and do weird things out on the road and stop the traffic. And he gives you an opportunity. It could be at your workplace, it could be a business transaction, it could be in something, it give you an opportunity and say, you know what, I feel, but if I say something, I might end up in trouble because the guy sitting inside that glass cabin can call the PR and finish my visa and so on and the money and well, the money go home and the bank and I wanted to build a house and what about the car and do, 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 this just goes on. And you need to remind yourself, who is my Lord? If that man is my Lord, I'm having all these thoughts. If I'm having all these thoughts, that man is my Lord for now. Somebody may be the Lord in your surroundings. Somebody, somebody may be the Lord in your hometown, in your village. In your... If Jesus is Lord, then he remains Lord. No one else can be your Lord. Hallelujah. And so, number four, we see this evening, if we want to pursue holiness, then we need to discern between Caesar's claim and God's claim. He says, give, render unto what I have placed his authority above you. But give God what belongs to God. And what is God, this holy God saying? He's saying, go and make disciples of all nations. He did not say, check it out with your boss. He says, go and make disciples of all nations. You have to pay taxes, pay taxes. If what is due unto the law, give it unto the law. Due. But is there an authority higher than that? Yes. If Jesus Christ is Lord and he is the highest authority, then whatever the law will come against you that Jesus has spoken, you will do what Jesus did and not what the law says because you place him highest. That's the holy life that you will live. Amen. Stephen, don't speak about God. He says, I'm going to speak about Jesus. I'm going to speak about Jesus. And, and this man, Saul, is after his blood. He's after his life. And he stones him and he finishes him but what happens there are two things that happen when Stephen forgave he saw the glory of God he saw the heavens open hallelujah he saw God move and what did it what did it portray it portrayed that this man lived a holy life <sighs> you're living a holy life 
will it affect somebody sure sir it will it made one hard nut to crack name mr saul to mr paul your holy living and our holy living can affect a murderer can affect a hard hearted person and change them even if you're gone promoted to glory god will be still at work in their life now what am i trying to say this evening whatever you sow that comes out and wells out of a holy living has to impact lives that's the call of the church holy living not to bite and devour one another but to bless one another to walk and live holy lives to forgive amen to give second chances god is a god of second chance hallelujah as i close this evening let me tell you holiness is complete purity amen god demands for us to do more than just acknowledge holiness Do you think that God just wants us to acknowledge holiness? No. If you think so that's wrong. Look at 1 1 Peter 1:16 says is be holy just as I am holy. Be he be ye holy for I am holy. Hallelujah. So more than acknowledging the importance of holiness, God is calling us to pursue holiness. Amen. I'm going to share a few points and i believe as i close these points will will surely help each one of us this evening to to walk uh, close and pursue holiness number 1 holiness is important to fellowship with god holiness is important for us to have fellowship with god when you go home you're going to read psalm chapter 15 okay psalms chapter 15 psalm chapter 15 small psalm and it begins with a question david shoots a question and the remaining verses are the answers so who can ascend your holy hill who can ascend your holy mountain who can come into your presence then you check verse 2 3 4 he who does not speak a lie he does not cheat his brother he who lives a So it's amazing to know how God the Holy Spirit spoke through this man David and and this chapter lays great emphasis on us knowing that holiness is important to fellowship with God. Amen. Number 2 I don't know if you thought about this but anyway let's take it up this evening. Holiness is important for our own well-being. I don't know if you thought about it but let's go at least we'll have a scripture to support that David knew the effects of unconfessed sin as he says in Psalms chapter 32 and verse 3 when i kept silent my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long what is he saying sin affected his life right down to his bones church sin will kill us god wants us to live and he is concerned about our well being that is why we must pursue holiness third holiness is important for effective service to god as we serve god holiness is important paul wrote to timothy and said in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21 if anyone purifies himself from these things what things sin he will be a special instrument set apart useful to the master prepared for every good work so let me tell you this evening holiness and usefulness are both linked together holiness and usefulness are linked together we cannot be an effective servant if we are an unclean vessel it's not just about standing and preaching or singing we all are called to serve the lord in some way or the other wherever god has placed us amen paul goes on and instructs timothy further in what holiness means and in the same chapter the next two verses timothy um uh, 2 Timothy 2 22 and 23 look at this listen to this flee from youthful passions and pursue righteousness faith 
love and peace along with those who call on the lord from a pure heart but reject foolish and ignorant disputes knowing that they breed quarrels don't entertain arguments they'll only breed quarrels it here i'm going to give you some practical advices this evening from god's word how we can be holy and live a life that is effective we can't live in sin and expect god to use us as unclean vessels he uses vessels that are clean let me give you an example <clears throat> how many of you wash dishes my hand is up okay okay praise god thank you all the honest brothers all of you most of you sometime or the other none of us like to eat in plates that are dirty none of us like to eat in plates that are dirty do we not at all none of us like to drink any drink in a dirty glass none of us like using a dirty fork god wants clean vessels too you think you only want clean stuff god wants clean stuff too and that is why his call for us is to live a holy life god uses vessels that are holy amen why holy vessels are vessels through which god's name is glorified holy vessels are those vessels that are sanctified and prepared for the master's use holy vessels are those vessels that are sensitive to the voice the move the leading the prompting of the spirit of god holy people living holy lives are lives with those they want to see the kingdom of god advance they want to see god's will be done not their desires not their will not their kingdom not their name not their ministry but his kingdom come down on earth just as it is in heaven and not just come but advance through our life you know holiness will help us as we pursue holiness it will help us advance the kingdom till jesus comes in all glory this evening let me ask you as i close everyone it says who professes I'm, i'm going to read matthew chapter 7 and uh, 17 to 20 because holiness is also important as an assurance for salvation okay matthew 7 17 to 20 likewise every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit verse 18 a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire thus by the fruit you will recognize them by the fruit on a christian's life you will know that they are living walking a holy life amen a life that is pleasing in the sight of god and church this evening this is the cry of god What an amazing price he has paid through his son Jesus so that we can walk and live a holy life amen and that's not the end God has not just called us to talk about holiness he has called us to pursue holiness hallelujah holiness is not a one time affair where somebody gives you a dose of holiness and you are holy forever we live in a fallen world and so this world tries to affect us the things of this world try to corrupt our mind and influence us but the choice that we would make to live a holy life and pleasing in the sight of god is that vessel which god will use in a tremendous way it does not matter how much you are qualified it does not matter from where you have come it does not matter exactly how much you know or don't know if you make a choice to pursue holiness you will see the holy spirit not only work in your life in your family in your finances in your business at your workplace in your generation but even through your life your life will be a blessing to many you know something you will hear the voice of god every time there'll be no time in your life where you say i can't hear god's voice because you're so connected you're so close to the holy spirit of god and that you would desire to pursue hallelujah by the fruits you will know them what fruit are you bearing today what fruit are you bearing today are you pursuing holiness are you striving to become clean 
you know as we ended worship the holy spirit spoke to us about those lines break my heart from what breaks yours think about it ponder on it and allow the holy spirit to really stir our hearts up that we will just start pursuing holiness and we will desire to know god's heart in every situation god bless you